How do we know what we know? What do we really know about truth? What is it that composes truth? What do we know about knowledge? What do we know about belief? How are these things structured? What creates them? What is their driving force? Well, there's a theory out there that answers this question. That theory is... The Social Epistemic Theory! This presentation is brought to you by Josh Niebert, a student at Tiffin University. To begin to understand the social epistemic theory of writing, we must first understand a few words and ideas. These words will help guide us in constructing our own thoughts about this theory. The first word is epistemology. It is a noun which means a branch of philosophy that investigates the origin, nature, methods, and limits of human knowledge. This section of philosophy attempts to try and solve what we know, how we know it, and how or why it can be justified. It is derived from the Greek words of episteme, meaning knowledge, and logos, meaning word. This root word leads to the adjective epistemic, of or relating to knowledge or the conditions for acquiring it. So, thinking about social epistemic theory, we can see that it relates to the social aspects of writing, the actions of relating to other people or things, and also how it relates to epistemology, relating to how and why we acquire information or knowledge. Now, this is a good starting point, but there are a few more words we should go over before continuing to talk about this theory. These words are ideology, which means the body of doctrine, myth, belief, that guides an individual, social movement, institution, class, or large group. Dialogic, of or relating to or characterized by dialogue, permute, to alter or to change, and social construct, which is also another name for this theory. A social mechanism, phenomenon, or category created and developed by society, or a perception of an individual group, an idea that is constructed through cultural or social practice. So now, what is social epistemic theory? Social epistemic theory, sometimes referred to as social construction theory, is a student-centered approach which began in the 1960s with the work of Robert L. Scott. Scott believed that through dialogic means, the individual's thoughts, ideas, and concerns in the real world are constructed. This theory attempts to bridge the gap between the stony classical academic paradigm and the experiences, ideas, and societal dispositions of students. This empowers students, giving them a chance to share their unique insights and experiences with others, continuing the trend of social construction. It is a theory which helps guide students to construct knowledge rather than simply consuming and regurgitating information. Some of the more prominent features of this theory are as follows. Writing can be a tool to expand one's ability to think and to understand the world around them, as well as a tool in which to share their own experiences and ideas. Writing is a tool to help create meaningful dialogue between people. This helps to expand one's own scope as well as others. With these in mind, it's important to note that language is subjective by nature. This theory points out that not everyone is coming to the metaphorical poker table with the same hand. A very important facet of this theory is that all writing is considered ideological. As Dr. Teresa S. Collin notes, teachers adhering to this theory consider knowledge and truth are socially constructed entities. Finally, learning is a constructive experience meant primarily for the student. Through hands-on thinking and dialogue, students can build their own ideas about the world piece by piece. One prominent thinker in this field is James A. Berlin. Born in 1942 and passing in 1994, Berlin was an important figure of compositional studies. He was primarily concerned with theorizing and wrote many articles and several books including Rhetorics, Poetics, and Cultures, Refiguring College English Studies, Rhetoric and Reality, Writing Instruction in American Colleges, and Writing Instruction in 19th Century American Colleges. Much of his work regarding this theory considers the role in which ideology and pedagogy play in thinking and writing abilities of students. One quote from his 1988 article, Rhetoric and Ideology in the Writing Class, reads, Ideology provides the structure of desire. 
indicating what we will long for and pursue. Dr. Teresa Collins has also compiled quite an extensive list of people relevant to this theory for those of you who wish to delve deeper into this topic. Here are those names in which you should begin with. One assignment students can do is to create a website or blog page dedicated to showing the multiple sides of a given social issue. Students will begin with one's own viewpoints and eventually will branch out into complementary and oppositional points of view. Students can do internet research, use social media, or interview people who share similar and opposing views. In the final form of the blog, students must demonstrate how their own view stayed the same or changed throughout the assignment. Assessment for this assignment is fairly subjective. Outside of following certain academic and technological conventions, it is important for some form of growth or consciousness expansion can be seen in their exploration of an issue. Do the student's viewpoint broaden? Do they take the time to engage in dialect with other people or ideas? These are the questions which should have to be posed before the assignment and assessed after its conclusion. This should be dispensed in the form of a rubric or other. Another exercise consists of assembly line writing. In this assignment, students begin free writing their thoughts about an issue over a set period of time. Let's say about five minutes. Students then pass their paper to someone else who in turn has three minutes to read the work and an extra five to engage in the dialogue with the writing. After that time, the paper is passed on once more to someone who has six minutes to read and five minutes to engage both dialogues. Afterward, papers are returned to the original owner and their homework is to read, research, and reply to the two other dialogues. Assessment here can be done in many ways. Points for participation, engagement, and dialogue, and the conventions and form of the final draft of the student work would all be considered accessible facets of this assignment. It can be graded on a holistic basis or a piecemeal rubric guiding the way. Once again, growth of one's ideas and the rationalization of them is of primary importance. In conclusion, social epistemic theory is a student-focused approach to engaging in thinking, writing, and dialogue with one's own ideas and experiences and those of the world at large. It attempts to answer tough questions about one's own conceptions of the world and those of others. It places the power of knowledge in the hands of students in order for them to build their own understanding of the world. Yeah.